No, go ahead now. No worries. Uh, yeah, so uh, I were I looked at data tables some time ago. Um, uh, we've got a system which has got invoices and quotes and all this sort of thing, which I built for internal use. And we've got hundreds of, of things in there. And views is a bit web looking, whereas data tables gives you much more of a less sort of an app look to things. Um, so what I'll do is I'll share my screen and just, just show you that um, and how that looks. Uh, just... So if we look at the data tables, their own site and just have a, a quick squiz there, it gives you like this sort of UI uh, for looking at your data. And as you can see, it's, it's very nice and quick and uh, there's a lot of cool stuff that you can do and you can search and all that. Um, that's all cool. Uh, I had looked at it ages ago and uh, hadn't ever gotten done anything with it because there was no sort of server-side processing. And as I said, I use I had a need to use it with hundreds of records, um, thousands of records even. And so it, this is like 57 records, I think, in this little demo they've got here, which works fine. But as soon as you get a lot of records, it just doesn't doesn't scale. So I wanted to see it with server-side processing. Um, and a couple of months ago, Ivan, who is Webwash on YouTube, uh, did a, a live sort of stream where he implemented a block doing basically this uh, for Drupal. Um, and he did it in a live stream, so it went for an hour and 25 minutes or something. And that sort of inspired me to say, look, there must be, there's no server-side processing that I could find for Drupal. Uh, this is probably something I can throw together. Let's let's just give it a go. And so that's what I did. Um, and uh, how I did it was uh, just started a new project on Drupal.org. Um, well, actually I did the code first and then did the project a bit later. Um, but basically what I've done is to start with the data tables CDN module and uh, sort of borrowed their, their libraries set up so that uh, we don't really have any dependency requirements, which is a bit different to the way that uh, Ivan did it. Um, and then I thought, well, how are we going to implement this with views? Because that, that's really the key that I wanted to get to is I wanted to have the flexibility of views, but the front end of the data tables interface and be able to get them to work together. And how I ended up, or how I've done that, is to extend the JSON serializer um, and output the data in a method, it's slightly different or slightly massaged so that it works nicely with the data tables um, uh, JavaScript. So basically I've just extended the existing serializer and made a new one um, and as you'll see a bit later, you simply choose that in the rendering of the view and that outputs the uh, the data for you. That was sort of, that's the first bit, but then you need also to have a block which presents the, uh, which can ingest that, that data. So had to write that. That was quite similar, I suppose, to what uh, Ivan did in his. Um, but I've added in a bunch of configuration so that we can utilize some of the power of the, the data tables um, server-side processing. And then uh, I had to write some JavaScript, which I'm not much of a fan of, um, but luckily it wasn't too much, so I didn't find it too hard. <laughs> and the rest of it is handled in just a views preview hook uh, which looks at the incoming query parameters and changes the way uh, changes the parameters for the view and adjusts it on the fly. So uh, the code is all on Drupal.org already. Uh, it's in the, there's a release, but it's like a dev release. Um, but I can show you what it looks like. So this is a start with a, a simple test. 
So if we reload, this is, there's 106 entries and they're just uh, nodes that I've generated with Drush Gen U and Drush Gen C to, uh, yeah, to put some content in this simple site. And you can see it just gives you a reasonably nice interface. When you click, it does sorting and that sort of thing as well. It's only one field in this. Um, but actually, if we look in here, we can look at the um, background. And I unmaximize the screen. What we can do is when we click, you can see the request going through, simple test one, what it's doing, and what it's retrieving. So go ahead, maximize that. Uh, so that's a fairly simple sort of view. We can get a bit more complex and put in like authored on as well. So we can sort by that. Um, but you might see that I've got this 106 entries here. It's just the same, the same everywhere. Um, so I'll show you how that can be adjusted and we'll like create one of these from scratch. But show you that the more advanced one. And <laughs> Yep. Uh, so how do we configure these? Um, it's actually not that hard if we go to views. So it's just a simple, the simple one is just choosing this format and then settings and making sure that it's on JSON. Um, and then you can put whatever fields in, um, and you can put sorting in as well. The filtering is just based on the fields that are listed. Um, the sort when you add stuff into the sorting, that does uh, allow allow you to sort on the different fields. Um, what else? Uh, if we go back a step, and I'll show you the more advanced view. So this just has extra fields. Uh, we could add something new into there, perhaps. We don't have comments. What else do we have? Content. Just add something simple like the ID. All right, save. And if we switch back to the test view three, reload, and the ID is there. So, Sortable, uh, I haven't tried searching for it, but let's see. Uh, no, that doesn't work. But yes, yeah, sorting and that sort of stuff does. Let's go back and see if we can make it searchable by putting the content and maybe don't need to do anything else. Just click save. Go back over here, reload the page and Seven. Oh, that doesn't work. Okay, that's a bug. It is still in a a, a test state. I would definitely say. Um, what else? Oh, so the other thing is the uh, this one has search and paging and the information that can all be uh, changed in the block configuration. So if you do block layout, what I've done, and this is sort of. The limitation at the moment is I've only implemented a block version of the view, which means you have to place it using the block sort of layout rules. Uh, so in this case, simple test three has the paging at the top start. Um, let's change it around like the paging on the on the top end and rather than the start. Um, and that's sort of terminology that comes from the uh, data tables um, itself. Uh, what we'll do is turn on require pressing enter or return to search as well. So it's not 
just dynamic like it was before. Um, and click save. Now, if we go back to that, reload, you should see that the search is over the other side um, and the paging is back over this side. And now we have to push enter to search. So if I can do the A, so that's uh, another thing that's just adjusted. Um, and this, uh, if we reset it, this is, sorry about that noise, uh, this sort of different, um, what I can see here with views, um, the pager, you can like theme it so that the page is down the bottom and uh, at the top and you could make all that sort of thing happen in a very similar fashion to this, um, but this has extra stuff on the data tables library that I haven't implemented yet that takes it a bit further, um, which I, which will be very nice to do. But some of the uh, some of the different layer options for this uh, are good. Um, one thing you'll notice is this view here is respecting the fact that I'm an anonymous user and so I can't click on the user profiles. If we look at the same page as the uh, as the logged in user, we can actually see the user profiles and just click on them and you know as normal. So it respects all the things that views normally does. Um, yeah, and pretty happy to have gotten it this far. Um, but. Uh, Keen to know if there's uh, any other people who are interested in this sort of thing or would have suggestions on how we could make it a bit better. Um, I, the code in the dot module file is like all in one function at the moment. Should split that out. That'd be nice. Um, and implementing a page style uh, view it has been tricky. I've tried a couple of different ways and just can't quite get that to work yet. So that's sort of next on my list to do, um, as well as implementing some of the, the cooler data tables functionality, which I think would be really nice as well. Um, any questions? Uh, I do. Do you have code examples? Like, is there somewhere we can download this and play around with it? Yeah, yeah. It's a contrib module on Drupal.org. Okay, what's it? What's it? What's the actual name of it? Uh, that's there. We go there. Data tables underscore server underscore side. Perfect. Thank you. Uh, and thanks for the inspiration, Ivan. Does it have like um, built-in caching, like views, like time base or? Cache base caching. Yeah, it's just views back end as as normal. So it'll respect tag based and all that sort of thing, just like views would. Yeah, I expect. Because like it's it's every everything it's doing, it's getting from the view. So every every like bit of paging and that sort of stuff, it's doing a get request. Oh, okay. So views is like the foundation. So it's still everything views can do, it, this can do. This is just like the front end part of it. That's what you mean, right? Yeah. Um. And uh, like searching for the ID that I tried before, like that didn't work. So uh, I, I wouldn't say everything views can do, this can do. But that that's sort of my goal is just to make it as uh, have a... a the service side processing of views and the flexibility of editing the view to be able to like just add the idea of field that quickly and have it like it almost does everything it just the search didn't work um and so and there's oh to give you an example uh for example the authored by field um that has to be put in slightly, slightly carefully so it's using a relationship so that it's the user's name text because if you put the authored on 
uh, in here as a field instead. It provides the ID, um, but the text that it shows is just the user's name. But by doing this, it's the actual text of the name, and that is used by the filter then. Um, so the filtering needs to have the text in there, not the ID. Question? Um, yeah. Maybe in the future, are you planning to do this as a paragraph with a content that has a table inside and use the same functionality? Because you've got the data table there. You just need to style it. Uh, there, I think there's a block in paragraph module. So you could probably just use that sort of straight away, I reckon. Um, but uh, implementing it in a paragraph wouldn't be that hard. Um, I'm not sure. Depends what you want to put in there, I guess. Uh, so in Ivan's uh, demo that he did, he used some hard-coded JSON. Um, this is just a dynamic source. Oh, and actually that's something else that I didn't show is uh, in the code base, uh, in the serializer, um, there's, uh, if you're doing a live preview, it does uh, JSON pretty print, which is about all I could do. I couldn't get it to actually do a data tables preview in there, but that's not too bad because it means you can actually see what is being sent exactly back to the data tables uh, JavaScript, um, which is that there. There's a there's a question from Carl in the chat. Are there any plans to run this in prod at some point? <laughs> uh, not not for us at this stage. It's purely scratching my own itch that I had uh, from some time ago. Uh, there's a couple of things that I think need to be looked at first. Like there's probably security for the uh, the end URLs, um, uh, which needs to be looked at. Um, uh, the caching like is probably okay. Um, but uh, yeah, this is unrelated to my question today about getting security audits done. <laughs> this is a, more a personal project. Yeah. Um, one other thing that I haven't really looked at is uh, theming uh, using data tables. Uh, all I've done is I've, like, I've just downloaded Bootstrap and just using that because it's, it's fairly easy and simple. Um, I noticed in testing this that like the 10 entries per page bit looks a bit wonky on the standard Drupal Claro thing. But um, I can't imagine that would be too hard to solve. And because it's just a block, uh, you can use all the standard Drupal theming capabilities. All right, thanks a lot, Simon. Any other questions? All right, I'll stop recording now. I'll stop sharing as well.